While Lac Sewell is known for a lot of things, big water and big fish of all species immediately come to mind. It's a bucket go. list angling destination, that's for sure. Located in Northwest Ontario's Sunset Country, Lac Sewell is approximately 150 miles long and the second largest body of water entirely within the province of Ontario. And although its walleye fishing is legendary, scores of anglers also visit Lac Sewell year after year to chase big toothy critters, both trophy pike and monster muskie. Today on The Edge, Jeremy Smith and Pete Prez Peoria do just that chasing muskies from a houseboat on one of Sioux Lookout's floating lodges in early fall. Talk about bucket list trips. Yes, today they target the biggest bad boys on the block, Lac Sewell muskies. From the convenience of a floating lodge, they encounter some world-class fishing. It's definitely some roll up your sleeve stuff and you're not gonna wanna miss it. Stick around as we chase the muskies of Lac Sewell. Work hard for these. Yeah, and the reward's incredible. All right, I'm gonna get her back in the net. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Welcome to massive Lac Sewell. This is home of the Giants. We're based in a houseboat this week, checking out spots just around the corner here for massive muskies, big pike, there's even walleye and tons and tons of smallmouth. We're gonna, I think, kill it, Pete. I think so too. When you called me and said we were going on a houseboat in fall on Lac Sewell, I dropped everything. I've been waiting for this all year long. I'm pumped. There isn't a better adventure that I can think of to put your boat where the fish are and be able to explore. Endless, there's just endless opportunities here. So I think with a little casting, we're gonna put some giant fish in the boat. Let's go. Okay, let's do it. Big cat. Wow, big, big fish. Man, that thing just, that was a nice fish, man. Right at the boat. That was like a 40 inch bite. Yeah, big fish. Big fish. Oh, there we go. Nice one. Big fish. Yep. Big fish, man. I don't know what it is. Was it a pike or a muskie? No, it's a muskie. What's that? It's a muskie. It's a muskie? Yeah. Oh man, we've just been looking for cabbage. Oh, it's a huge pike. Where do you see the size of this pike? Unbelievable, Jack. Oh yeah. Man, that is a big fish. Whoa, Pete! <laughs> oh, man. Holy man, <laughs> that is unbelievable. So we're up here on a houseboat adventure. Perfect, it just popped off. And of course, once you know it, we get the classic fall transition, rainy. So we're just all kind of looking at stuff and we just found a patch of deer tongue weeds. Weeds are really dying right now and wait till you see the size of this pike. That's gonna make life. All right, look at that. That is one of my all time favorite go to Canada baits right now. I mean, it's just tough musky fishing. We're just really looking for signs of life. So this is something I can throw on. I have confidence I can catch a big musky on it, big pike like it and big walleyes love it. It's our first outing, first nice patch of weeds we found, and look at what was in there. Where do you see this jack? This thing is a monster, monster, <laughs> monster pike. I haven't caught a pike this big in years. And this is, if this was a muskie, we'd be like, this is a nice muskie. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I mean, look at the size of this critter, huh? <laughs> Unbelievable. The beauty of fall fishing up here and on Lac Sewell on a houseboat like this, you're all by yourself, you're right next to the fish, it's just awesome! Woo, I got a feeling this trip's gonna turn out producing some big fish. All right, I'm gonna get it back and then get a still. Oh, there we go, big fish. Oh, yeah. All right. There we go. That thing smashed it. Woo! It's not a giant one, but it's a muskie. It's a muskie. Wow, the way that thing hit, 
totally going the opposite direction. I thought I had a world record. It is no secret. Beautiful, huh? Look how thick they are for their size. That is going to be an awesome fish. Someday it's going to be a monster. Let me get her back. Oh, look at that. Nice one. Nice one. Here we go. Here we go. Big one. This segment has been brought to you by Donlinger Automotive, and they want to encourage you to drive safe on the road and on the water. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Oh, nice. I don't know if it's huge. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, nice one, not giant, but holy cow. I'm with the net, Jerry. Okay, sounds good. Whoa, black stool roll. Tell you what, I am really good at catching small muskies. <laughs> this is a nice muskie, but I go to the world class waters of black stool, eagle, lake of the woods, sunset country. Whoa. All right, here we go. Oh, how do you like that? Look at how thick that is, man. Yeah. Sweet. Black Sewell. New hole? Sure. Well, God, I feel like we should just fish this front face down real quick. Okay. <clears throat> oh my gosh, look at that one. Big one. Big one. Come on, come back for it. Wow. Oh, he just took a swipe at it. Dang, right at the boat too. Big fish, man. Big, big fish. Oh, whew. That got my heart going. If I was 10 feet further back, oh, I think that thing went a bit. That was a really big fish. Unbelievable. We've been looking at a lot of cabbage beds and one thing that I've seen, you know, is like, Weeds are just so incredibly important. So I, you know, I love fishing reefs and all that stuff. And right now you'd look and we're in the back end of a bay and it's fall. You'd be like, why would you fish, fish there? You know, the, the tendency is fish to move out into the big lake right now. We're finding anywhere there's good weeds, there's big fish. And I just had a giant muskie come roll on this bait, like a big one, like what we're coming to Lac Sewell for. One thing I really pay attention to as well when I'm pulling into a spot is looking for food and oftentimes you know like you'll pull up to a spot and you'll be in that 30 feet of water or whatever and you start to see walleyes right so like this spot we just saw a giant fish in the cool thing was as we pulled into this bay the break coming up to it just loaded with walleyes on the front face the back end of it had perch following our, our musky baits in so most of the places we've been to have, they just haven't had a lot of life so you start to see life like that if you see walleyes perch those bait fish a lot of times, even if you fish and you don't see a muskie, there's probably one in the area, and that was definitely the case where there's food, there's life in this bay, and voila, there's a big muskie. Muskie fishing is all about timing. Well, a lot of fishing for that matter, but you know, you just don't get that many opportunities. And right now, it's uh, we got we're two days till full moon, and moon rises at 7 p.m. and sunsets at about 8 o'clock, and it's really that magic time. So, just because you fish all day. And sometimes musky fishing is hard, you might not see much, oh but during those prime times, be on your best spots. If you haven't seen a fish yet for the trip, pick an area that looks really good, you've got confidence in, or of course go back to areas where you've seen big fish. We haven't seen anything today. It's been really slow, we've had bad weather, but it, you know, in the last 30 minutes we've had a giant one up and then another one just came up. We've seen a couple now show up on the depth finder and the snack down, it's like, things are happening. So we're getting close to moonrise. You can already see the action is picking up. Oh, missed him. Dang it, I felt him too. Nice one. God darn it. Oh my gosh, look at that one. Big one. 
big one. Come on, come back for it. Wow. Oh, he just took a swipe at it. Dang, right at the boat too. Big fish, man. Big, big fish. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Ooh, look at this one. Ooh, you see him? That's a nice one, man. That's a different fish. That one was bigger. Oof. Wow, that was cool. That was a nice fish there, man. Nice one. Ooh, we're gonna get one. We're gonna get one. I mean, that's... When you come to a place like Lac Sewell, I mean, I, my favorite place in the world is to fish up here in Sunset Country, but you come to these places, and they're so vast, and it's so unspoiled that it just feels like you could really catch like a scary sea monster. And that's just one of the, the fun things about this. And as your week goes on, you start seeing a fish here, a fish there. Some of these spots, you, you know, you pull into and you're like shaking as you pull up because you know the potential of what could be down there. It is just so fun. Being on a houseboat has to be one of the greatest Canadian adventures available. If you've never done it, you owe it to yourself to put this on your list. The fact is you're on a floating palace that you take to prime hunting grounds on a massive body of water. And that's a big thing when you're chasing an apex predator like muskies. The houseboat affords you flexible hours for fishing from sunup to sundown without extreme running times. In the middle of the day, it becomes an island to regroup with your friends, grab a bite to eat, retie lines, fuel up, and share some fishing stories. With all the comforts of home, Sioux Lookout Floating Lodges are the perfect mobile command post for any diehard fisherman. So when it comes to lure selection, you know, muskies often, you just don't see that many of them. So it, you know, it can be intimidating. How do you find a pattern? So, you know, one of the things that we'll, we'll do to start is we'll maybe have one guy throwing a spinner bait or a bucktail, something that's moving in line. Up. You know, an inline spinner has produced more muskies than anything else. But then often a dive and rise or a jerk and pull type of technique can work really well. So, you know, in the fall, the water's in the mid 60s to high 50s. I really like, you know, the super shad, the suix, those types of baits that dive and rise. And even rubber is in play at this time of year too. And the fish will tell you, I mean, if the, if the pike are on it, often that's, you know, that's what the, the muskies are biting, biting too. So if we're, you know, we're getting, oh, there's big weeds up there. We're getting a lot of action on dive and rise with, with big pike and stuff. We're gonna stick with it because the muskies are probably on it too. Advancements in technology make fishing today better than it ever has been before. When I started muskie fishing, each guy had a musky rod, that was it, like a six to seven foot rod, a pool cue, you know, and you threw everything on that. Today, rods, reels, line, even leaders, they're all designed to fish certain presentations, just like for walleye or for bass. So when we're on a trip like this, we're bringing multiple rods per guy. Granted, I do a lot of musky fishing, so I, you know, I, I'm, I'm into it, I've got a bunch of rods, but this is, again, a legend elite. This one is an 8.6 medium heavy fast. This is the one that I'm throwing my, most of my jerk baits with. I'm also fishing this with a size 300. So this is a Lex HD 300 and a 7.4 gear ratio. This thing's just sweet. It's lightweight. The rod can handle those walk the dog baits and also the dive and rise baits like this. One of my favorite things about working with Daiwa is the fact that being a true manufacturer, we're always able to push the limits, make things better. And our Lexa line has been very popular for a long time now already, popular with muskie anglers and even uh, saltwater anglers on the coast uh, for its value. But working with these engineers of late, they're actually improving on the reels. And one of the ways we do that is we use our key pro staffers to, to really put a workout through these reels and test them and see what's going on. When the engineers reached out to me and said they were working on this project to upgrade the Lexa HD line, I actually reached out to Jeremy Smith here at Linder's Angling Edge and he uh, put the reels through their paces for me. And we're actually on a third generation now and getting them dialed in and perfect for the muskie anglers in the north. So this is the new one. We've been able to put it through its paces here and it's been a blast. Uh, I've yet to get my big muskie. Jer knows I'm a big bass nut and he's trying to get me out of my shell and do some cool stuff. And being up here on Lac Sewell is the perfect place to come test out the new Lexa HD from Dial.
Your electronics play a more critical role here than just about anywhere I've, I've ever fished. So number one is navigation. In this unit, we've got the Lake Master Ontario chip and it's pretty good. Laxul is actually, compared to some other lakes, pretty safe to run, but it is so massive and so big Having a good map can really help you navigate, just getting from spot to spot, because some of these long runs can be really, really long. The other thing is, obviously, sonar. It's a big deal. So we're using our graphs this time of year, especially when we're looking for walleyes in deep water. So there's two screens that I have set up for fishing up here. When I'm like looking for fish and fishing, I've got the quadrant set up to be GPS, side imaging, down imaging, and 2D sonar. So that's what I'm using when I'm fishing, but when we're running spot to spot, I change it up to just the map. Now I've got two, or two screens here when I, I split them. One is a really big picture image of the, of the lake so I know where we're at relative to everything else. And then the other is zoomed in. So this really helps when you're navigating. You've got the zoomed in version so you can follow your trails to get through little passages or you can make safe navigation routes. And then you've got the big map on the other side to see exactly where you're at on the lake. So having those two screens as your quick sets can be really helpful and really efficient for covering water up here on a massive lake like Lac Sewell. Oh, fusion dude, fusion. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Oh, vegan dude, vegan. Still there, Pete? <laughs> How, like huge? Biggest I've ever seen. Biggest fish you've ever seen. So we just saw, Pete just saw the biggest fish that he's ever seen in his life. And we've got about a half an hour until moonrise. So we're just kind of looking for another spot that's nearby because we want to be back on that fish at, at moonrise and it almost coincides with sunset. So I think that's our best odds. Rather than sit and beat up that fish, keep casting on it, we'll let it rest, hopefully it repositions to where it was and you can get hooks into that thing. <laughs> I hope I get another shot at her, I hope I do. Got her. Got her, yes. Nice. Oh yeah, boys. Oh yeah. Woo! Boy, did she smash that thing. Pete, I'm sorry to steal your fish. It's all right. Wow. That, I'm shaking though. Man, that's un unbelievable. Woo, right there, here's your shot. Yeah! yeah. Done. Woo! Good job, Jerry. Oh, man. Really good job. Moonrise, Woo. sunset, whew, it happened. And I feel guilty. I took Pete's fish. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to have a great time, you got to come up to beautiful sunset country, explore a place like Lac Sewell, a week on a houseboat, hunting giants. I mean, this is big game hunting, a premier location. I, that was just unbelievable, oh, Pete. chasing dream fish all week long. <laughs> you work hard for these. Yeah. And sweet. the reward's incredible. All right, I'm going to get her back in the net. We'll get a picture. All right. Woo. Fun book titled The Pocketbook of Angels, The Power of a Protective Presence in Your Life. I've got to share a story with you. Just a couple days ago, my brother Ron and I and our friend Kurt were going to fish a bass lake uh, that we haven't been to all year. We take Kurt's boat, not my boat. We get about five miles out of my hometown of Brainerd and he gets a flat tire on, on a trailer. We pull off the side of the road, it's a busy weekend, cars are flying by, pulls the spare off, changes the tire, we get all of that done. We look and the tire's really low of air, really down. 
He said, you know, right up here, there's not too far up. We'll hobble up. There's a, a, a place on the right side of the road. The place is called Hingles. And, and yeah, yeah, you know, well, well, we figured there's somebody going to be in, in there this afternoon. Maybe they got some air there. Lo and behold, there's one guy in the office is getting ready to leave when we pull in. Hey, we got a problem with some air in the tire. Can you help us out? The guy knew me. He knew Kurt. And he said, yeah, come on, drive around the back. So he pumps the, the tire up with air. Bingo, thank you. Talk to you later. Appreciate it. Get back on the highway. Five minutes. We're not far from a town called Motley. Five minutes down the road, another small town. The tire blows again. Ta-da. We have no spare. Now we're in real doo-doo. This one was a bad one. We're looking, what do we do? How far can we drive? Do we screw up the rim or not? We hobble into, into there's a gas station, food store, and some stuff right in this small town off the side of the road. We pull in there. We unhook the boat, get the tire, tires off. Everything is done. I call back to my hometown in Brainerd. Uh, uh, we leave my friend Kurt there. My brother and I jump in the car. We drive all the way back to Brainerd. We get into town. We buy two new tires, we have them put on a rim, we drive all the way back out there, we put them back, back on, and it, this whole deal took about three hours when it was all said and done. Now we're not going out to this lake to go check it out. So I give a call to my wife, we're gonna come, come back, go to another lake for a little while. I call my wife, I give her an update on this thing, and the first thing that comes out of her, her mouth is God didn't want you to go to that lake today, did he? I had to stop and think about it, whoa, and you know, the more I thought about it, she was right. She says, we pray every morning for safety and protection. In a lot of cases, safety and protection for some of the dumb things that we do protect us from ourselves. He says, there's no question about it, Al. He didn't want you going there. I don't know why, you don't know why, but I know for sure that, that he didn't want it. Could have, something bad could happen. Whatever it is, you got your answer to prayer in the morning. And I believe that with all my heart. How about you? And from all of us here at the edge, you have a good safe fishing season. See you in the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.